What's up, it's your boy Remus, and on this video, I'm gonna be giving a little overview slash review of the things that I've learned in this book. It's called The Mating Mind, how sexual, uh, how sexual choice shaped the evolution of human nature. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, how sexual behavior has evolved throughout time, right? And um, it starts off, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be speaking about what I liked from the book, what I learned from it. And maybe you're going to be motivated to get yourself because it's good to know this stuff because this is the stuff that people want to know. People want to be Twitter experts, but reading this stuff is what makes you the expert, right? So it starts off talking about Darwinism. I'm looking at my notes here. It starts off talking about Darwinism. Um, it, it talks about how, how Darwin proposed his theory of evolution and natural selection but it wasn't exactly um just taken to easily um when it was first proposed and then it goes into the opponents of the theory and it goes in and and the author talks about his interpretations of each theory right so now after that we get into the juicy stuff it starts talking about male competition how males compete for the um, reproductive opportunities that females offer. He talks about it across different animals. You know, there are literally animals in which um, it's called a lek. The men will basically meet up and they will just go at it in order to, um, you know, compete for the woman's reproductive opportunity because she would look and say, oh yeah, that guy's strong. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the notes here. Du -du -du -du. Polygyny occurs where males are competitive, meaning polyandry would occur where females are more competitive. This goes back to what I'm saying about how one sex's choices influences the other. Uh, one interesting kind of observation is that male displays are most evident around the age of 20 to 30 when sexual competition is at its highest for men. You know, so this explains why culture can strongly be driven by men because culture is driven by displays of reproductive value. And one thing I learned about in this book is that um, men are constantly trying to compete right by showing displays of their evolutionary fitness um so even for example one example it gives in the book is that uh, if you if you hear a car going by and it's uh it's someone blazing music very loud it's probably likely to be a young guy because on a subconscious level he's trying to communicate his evolutionary fitness uh it then goes in to talk about dna talks about how DNA is the different ways which DNA can spread itself it can grow and double or it can grow and break off but these are more like what bacteria and stuff like that does but sexual sexual reproduction literally evolved as a let me see here yeah sexual reproduction evolved as a strategy for getting the best genes that you can for your offspring because from my understanding after i read this book it's like humans there's a perfect copy of a human but each time it, it, it goes down there could be mutations so sexual reproduction is a way to get the best genes that you can when you think about it you're competing well let's say you're going for a woman's beauty you're competing for the woman who has the least amount of mutations um genetically it also goes to talk about the different expressions of evolutionary fitness and many cultural activities such as art such as sport um even displays of charity these have evolved as a way of expressing your value as a re reproductive mate, right? Um, what else? Sexual choice, yeah. As proven in what I just said, sexual choice permeates everyday life because things that increase social status also increase mating prospects. So we don't even understand a lot of the time we're doing things that increase our social status, but really it's that increases our reproductive value and that's the reason why we want to do it. And then it also goes on to explain the differences in male and female 
uh, in terms of the activities they do pertaining to life. So the difference is in communication, activities that they want to do, um, the way we do things is different because of all these, all of these subconscious factors. So let me go through the rest of my notes here. Yeah, it talks about DNA, how it copies itself. Um, then it has a chapter on courtship and how courtship was done years ago in the Pleistocene period, which is like, you know, 200,000 years ago. Um, the differences in primates or the, the sexual behavior in primates and how it relates to humans. What else? Do, 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 do. Yeah, and it talks about women with with more sy symmetrical. Yeah, it talks about the beauty of women and how the beauty of women is a genetic indicator for a man to see it, like how healthy she is and her level of mutations. And this is um, it's a very scientific book, I would say, but it, it it takes the science and then explains so many different parts of of life and i wrote that the prose of it is is that it explains the context and theories surrounding so many different topics as well as the different scientists and psychologists who propose those different theories as well as the merits and faults of the different theories the con i put was sometimes it could feel off topic or irrelevant because but that's a personal thing because I don't need to know every single every single thing like every single explanation if it doesn't actually relate to, to life and I don't need to go so deep into it I just need to know the facts but that's a personal thing like it's subjective I can't you know expect someone to write um, less because I don't specifically need that information or I, find, I don't find it relevant so that's the overview. I'm just looking at the other notes. Yeah, it has a few other interesting facts. Um, yeah, virtues and expressions of morality have arguably resulted from sexual choice as moral emotions, judgment, and reasoning were favored in courtship. So that even takes something like morality and our social values and it explains how it's actually come from our um, expressions of reproductive value in relation to a courtship so all of these things on a subconscious level are coming out on a conscious level but we just think it's something else so that's one of the main things that I got from this book so uh, in all in all I would highly recommend it um, it might be a bit wordy it might be a bit intense or heavy sometimes for some people but overall it's not a, a book that you can go wrong with if you want to go into the science of um, attraction over evolution. Um, here's the... I'm just looking at my notes in... Nah, that's it. So, if you want videos like this, make sure to check out the rest of my videos because I like to study the dynamic between the male and female and also share that information with you because then you're going to have a better understanding of their sexual and dating landscape. Okay, peace. I'll see you in the next one.